Hey everyone, it's Brett Hornby here. Welcome back to my YouTube channel here, and here we are in the second week of January here, and figure it's time to do another trade retrospect video here, as it happened around this time. Actually, it was eight years ago, as the Calgary Flames seem to continue on this tradition of uh, bringing back fan favorites when they're a little older and more expensive here. However, in this trade here, it was very unusual circumstances for the player involved that we got back here with the Calgary Flames. Remember when we brought this guy back? Yes, Michael Camilleri, and this is that special t-shirt that he actually wore in 93. As most of his NHL career, he did wear number 13, and uh, he definitely tempted fate big time where he wore that number with the New Jersey Devils here, but uh, it was definitely exciting, actually. I was excited as a fan where I found out Mike Camilleri was coming back to the Calgary Flames here as uh, he did start his career with the Los Angeles Kings and then in a flurry of trades where, and there was a few separate trades here where we did trade away uh, Alex Tangay at the 2008 draft there. I still don't get how the trade tree actually worked here, but I know ultimately we were chaining first round picks, but Alex Tangay eventually was traded out, and he actually went to Montreal, and the Calgary Flames got Mike Camilleri in the first season, in the 2008-09 season here, and it was definitely a successful season, as he had his career high in goals and points there, as I believe he had 39 goals and 82 points there, so it was a point of game there. However, when it came to 2009 here, the Calgary Flames weren't able to uh, keep Mike Camilleri here as after, you know, putting up a couple 80-point seasons, 30-goal seasons with the Los Angeles Kings, and he did the one season with the Calgary Flames here, he definitely was going to be in for a big pay increase. And at that time, the Calgary Flames decided to go after Jay Bomeister. So we couldn't afford to keep Mike Camilleri as after when we locked up Jay Bomeister. Mike Camilleri signed a big deal with the uh, Montreal Canadiens as he signed like, like a five-year deal worth six million dollars a year and that was very rich there at the time and ultimately when he went to the Montreal Canadiens he actually scored the 2000, 20,000th goal in Montreal Canadiens history and actually in his first year with the Montreal Canadiens, he definitely was beloved when he first came there because he was a part, him and Yaroslav Halak in the 2010 playoffs there, went on a nice run there to the conference championship where he ultimately lost to the, the Philadelphia Flyers who ultimately lost to the Chicago Blackhawks here, but Mike Camilleri scored 10 goals in that playoffs there. He was a scoring machine there and Yaroslav Halak was a wall there. However, a couple of years passed on. Yeah, he still was a relatively productive player, although he managed to uh, have had to have some injuries because he didn't play full seasons with the Montreal Canadiens the first couple seasons there. But he was here at the 2011 Heritage Classic, and he was one of the faces of the players for the Montreal Canadiens, and Jerome McGinn obviously was for the Calgary Flames. However, it was going into the 2011-12 season that uh, ultimately Mike Camilleri, so that big contract that ultimately we couldn't sign, ultimately the Calgary Flames wound up paying most of it here at the end of the day because he was about halfway through his contract with the Montreal Canadiens where eventually Montreal was definitely a struggling team at the time there and uh, but apparently prompted this trade is that, I mean the media makes it sound like that uh, it took it was in talks for a month that Calgary wanted to bring Mike Camilleri back, but it was the, a couple days ago where he talked about the team, you know, and building this losing culture, and no wonder we're losing, and he called the team out on it, and then, of course, uh, some said, oh, he said that in English, and, uh, you know, the French paper translated, and apparently that blew up, where I think actually Mike Camilleri was playing the Boston Bruins in this game, and what makes this trade strange, under strange circumstances for Mike Camilleri, is he was actually traded during the game. 
as he was no longer found on the bench and he eventually got traded to the Calgary Flames, back to the Calgary Flames and he was definitely, definitely excited to come back to the Calgary Flames. I mean, he was definitely, you know, he definitely gave great, gave great sound bites. He definitely was a great personality when he was here. And, oh, yeah, the, you know, the scoring part uh, definitely was awesome when we brought him back here. And, uh, you know, when I first saw him in person when he was here the first time, and I got to say, you know, he's actually only four days older than me in the program there. And I mentioned that to him when I had a picture of him. He told me Gemini's rule. Yes, Gemini's rule, and he definitely is a Gemini to a T there in the media there. But also what just made it strange was when his free debut with the Calgary Flames here, that was also the time when we had Brent Sutter as head coach. Calgary happened to be playing the Los Angeles Kings, the first game on Hockey Day in Canada, back when Mike Cavalier was back with the Calgary Flames. We were taking on the Los Angeles Kings, a team that he originally drafted in. And oh yeah. The Los Angeles Kings, they were still getting used to Daryl Sutter as head coach. And it was the first time that Daryl Sutter came to Calgary as opposition after he was, uh, let's say, asked to leave the Calgary Flames general manager. And I made my, it was a much longer video than I anticipated, but I made my happy Daryl Sutter Day video about just going over everything about Daryl Sutter he does as a coach and general manager and, and how it happened on the same calendar day that he came here as coach, and we were happy to to have him as head coach. But he also left general manager the same calendar date, and we were just happier to leave. But uh, it was just straight circumstances that he came, made his re-debut at the Calgary Flames against the Los Angeles Kings. The Battle of the Sutters, it was the first time Daryl and Brent faced off each other at the National Hockey League. Daryl and Brian faced off as coaches many times. And then actually Mike Camilleri scored a goal in that game, but... Uh, now let's actually get to the trade here. It was actually a pretty good trade for the Calgary Flames. Not so for the uh, Montreal Canadiens. And uh, they definitely set them back here. It was actually on January 12th, 2012. So eight years to the, almost the date when this trade happened. The Calgary Flames, they traded forward Rene Bork. And actually at that time, he was actually on suspension here. Rene Bork, he... I'm going to say he had his best offensive numbers with the Calgary Flames after we signed him from the Chicago Blackhawks here. And despite the name, he actually, it's a French name, but he actually didn't speak much French at the time of the trade. Actually, he did came from the French part of Alberta, Lac La Biche. But, uh, yeah, Rene Bork was going to the Montreal Canadiens. And Montreal also wanted to make his trade so they could shed some salary because he made half as much as Mike Camilleri. And there was a prospect named Patrick Holland, who was a seventh-round pick that the Calgary Flames drafted in 2010, and the 2013 second-round draft pick, who the Montreal Canadiens uh, used it on, Zach Fucali. Coming to Calgary Flames, we got Michael Camilleri, goaltender Kari Ramo, and the 2012 fifth-round pick would turn out to be Ryan Calkin, who Ryan Calkin actually did not... Uh, play in the NHL. Actually, when it came to the Montreal Canadiens side of the trade here, they had Rene Bork, who played a couple seasons with the uh, Montreal Canadiens before he left the NHL. Patrick Cullum actually only played five games with the uh, Montreal Canadiens, and that was the only five games he played in the NHL. I didn't score anything. And Zachary Ficali, the goaltender, who was a tiny tiny prospect with the uh, in junior there, and he actually led to uh, World Juniors and that there. He has not played in the NHL here. Well, the Flames, well, we, we were happy to get Mike Camilleri back for two and a half more seasons and did score at the same pace that he scored at with the Calgary Flames the second time, probably the first time. And, you know, I was actually a little disappointed that uh, there was speculation that, well, for sure he was going to get traded at the 2014 trade deadline as that contract was expiring and he didn't actually sign with the well, he didn't get traded because apparently there was no right deal here. As Calgary was selling off assets that season, and that was also the time when uh, it was Jay Feaster that made his trade. It actually was a great trade, but uh, he did make some good moves a year later, and obviously Brian Burke took over when he was president of hockey operations. He played hardball, and there was no right move for Mike Camilleri, and he eventually signed the New Jersey Devils for five more years, and... And then he, you know, ended his career at the Los Angeles Kings, the Empty Dollars. 
Kerry Rommel, we still had a good, decent run with him for three seasons. And then that fifth-round pick that we drafted was Ryan Kalk, and he never played in the NHL or the Flames here. So that was the trade there. So I'm going to say it was definitely a pretty good trade for the uh, Calgary Flames here. As Mike Camilleri, if you look at his career stats here, I mean, overall in the NHL, he played 906 games and uh, he scored 294 goals, 348 assists for 962 points here, and then 32 playoff games. Well, he he had 17 goals, 15 assists for 32 points there, but he had 13 of those goals in uh, 29 or 209-10 there with the Montreal Canadiens. But I say, yeah, his finest season in the NHL. He had uh, that one season, first season he was with the Calgary Flames. And 08 09 there, he had 39 goals, 43 assists there for 82 points. And that was the season then we couldn't sign him because we decided to go after Jay Bowmeister here. I mean, his first season with the Montreal Canadiens, he had played 65 games. He scored 26 goals, 24 assists for 50 points. And that still seemed a lot at the time for, uh, for a $6 million a year player. But then he played. 19 playoff games and scored 13 goals there. I guess I underestimated. I, I know I thought he scored 10, but I know he was a scoring machine there in the playoffs there. And then the following season, he played 67 games with Montreal Canes in 10-11 there, including at the Heritage Classic there. And there was actually, he was still battling injury and didn't know if he played, but he actually played in that game. He only scored 19 goals, 28 assists, 47 points, and then in 7 Playoff games, he had three goals, seven assists for ten points there. So he definitely played well for the Montreal Canadiens in the playoffs when he did. But then at the time when he got uh, traded to Calgary in 2011-12 season, in 38 games there, he only had nine goals, 13 assists for 22 points there. And then he said what he said there. And then when he came to Calgary, back to Calgary here in 11-12 there, in 20 games, he definitely uh, scored a little more. He had 11 goals, 8 assists, 19 points there in 20 games here. And then 12-13, well, that was the lockout short season there. He had 44 games. He had 13 goals, 19 points for 32 assists there. So he almost got back to his scoring pace there. And in the last season, I mean, he, he definitely had injury issues because the last full season that he played was the first, was uh, his only first season with the Calgary Flames. And then the first two seasons he was in the NHL where – he made his full, his first full season in the NHL was 5-6 there, but he played parts of the seasons in 2002-3 and 3-4 and with the Los Angeles Kings and the uh, Manchester Monarchs here. But when he did play, he was definitely a great scorer there. And, uh, you know, and then when he went to the New Jersey Devils there, I mean, his first season in New Jersey in 68 games, he had 27 goals, 15 assists, 42 points there. But then, you know, his numbers started tailing down toward the ends of his career as he got older there and his last season with the Edmonton Oilers he only played 51 games in 17-18 he only had 4 goals 18 points 22 assists here but it was still a good trade for the Calgary Flames considering uh, if you look at Rene Bork here as uh, overall his uh, playing numbers as uh, together in the NHL there, he, he played 725 games in the NHL there, scored 163 goals, 153 assists for 316 points here. I mean, his best seasons were was with the Calgary Flames, where in his, his best season overall was in 9-10 there. As, uh, he played 73 games, he scored 27 goals, 31 assists, 58 points. That was his career high here. But when he was a flame there, he, he scored three 20-goal seasons and scored at least 40 points there. After he was in Chicago there, where he only he had two uh, seasons where he had just over 10 goals. So uh, he definitely picked up his offensive pace here. But when he went to the Montreal Canadiens, after 11-12 there, up to the Calgary Flames, he, he played 38 games. He had 13 goals, 3 assists for 16 points here. And then when he went to the Montreal Canadiens, he only had 5 goals, 3 assists for 8 points in 38 games with the Montreal Canadiens. His best season with the Montreal Canadiens was in 13-14 there, and he didn't, just like Mike Camilleri, he uh, didn't have a full healthy season there because he battled injuries because the following season, in 12-13, he only played uh, 23 games, 27 games. He had 7 goals, 6 assists for 13 points there. 
was his best season in Montreal was 13-14 where he had 63 games. He had 9 goals, 7 assists for 16 points here. And then he floated around and then eventually finished his NHL career with the Columbus Blue Jackets. There were, he only got 10 goals and not even, or his last season Columbus in 16-17 in 65 games. He had 12 goals, 6 assists for 18 points there. He was the centerpiece of the trade going back to Montreal there. So uh, definitely was a great trade considering that Patrick Holland only played five games in the NHL. All of Montreal and Zachary Ficali did not uh, play with the uh, in the NHL at all, never mind the Montreal Canadiens here. While Kari Ramo, we actually got three decent seasons from him as a Calgary Flame there as he was in the KHL with Avangard Omsk. As the, Tampa, or as the Montreal Canadiens had his rights there, he started his career with the Tampa Bay Lightning, and then Montreal had his rights here. And he was in the All-Star game. He was consistently in the top five in uh, key goaltending categories here. But Because uh, in the KHL, in 191 games, he had 106 wins, 58 losses, and 23 overtime shield losses. And then he had uh, two goals against average, exactly two, and the 924 save percentage at 18 shutouts here. In the NHL... He played 159 games. He had 60 wins, 63 losses, 18 overtime shield losses, and he had five shutouts and a 285 goals against average and a 906 save percentage here. He didn't make his debut with the Calgary Flames until 2013-14 here, as he didn't come over right away, and he still was in the KHL during the lockout short season. So the first full season of the lockout here in 40 games, he was 17, 15, and 4. He had two shutouts, 265 goals against average, and a 9-11 goals against. Same percentage there. And then in 14-15 there, he was also splitting in that with uh, Jonas Hiller here. 37 games, he was 17-18-1. and well, 14-15, that was 15-16, but in 14-15 and 34 games, he was 15-9-3 there. He had two shutouts, 260 goals against average, and 9-12 save percentage. And he actually played in seven playoff games because he eventually took over and was the goalie that was in that when we managed to beat the Vancouver Canucks but lost the Anaheim Ducks in seven playoff games. He was two and three on the two eighty six goals against average and now six save percentage here and then that was the last season was fifteen sixteen. He was seventeen, eighteen and one and he still had a shutout, two sixty three goals against average nine nine save percentage here. So Curry Ramo was a decent starter but he definitely was just a stopgap and you know, we still always seem to be looking for a goalie here, but, you know, it still was a pretty good trade for the uh, Calgary Flames when we got Mike Camilleri back here, and that's my trade retrospect there, and it was just strange that uh, he was uh, traded during the game here, and I have another retrospect video that I'm going to do later in the month here. We'll be brought back yet another, you know, fan favorite that he was also under unusual circumstances as well for him. So I can give us, drop you some hints here. It'll happen at the end of January here. And uh, it involved bringing back another fan favorite. You know, the tradition of we couldn't sign the player. And then we decided to bring him back when he's older and more expensive. And uh, that was a Daryl Sutter thing. And this was definitely an exception with Jay Feaster. But it was actually a great trade. When you look at it, you know, we got Mike Camilleri back. And we got a few, three good, three okay seasons with Carl Rommel, while the Montreal Canadiens, you know, they had a even more injured Rene Bork there, a prospect that we did draft in the seventh round that was looked highly after, only played five NHL games, and a goalie prospect that looked good who never played in the NHL there. So yeah, that's just another trade retrospect video here. I did one on Theron Fleury, where I felt that wasn't as good of a trade, considering what Fleury meant to the Flames and what we got returned. I mean, yeah, we did get a long-time flame in that trade, but uh, it didn't replace what uh, Fleury did. And then I look back at the Joe Newendike trade, which I'm going to say that was a damn good trade, where we traded away one of the best flames that we ever had for the greatest flame. And then I look back what I think was the worst trade that the Calgary Flames, and I made these retrospect trades close to the same date when we traded Dougie Gilmore. So, uh, and there'll be another trade I'll talk about closer to the date, where we made another big trade with the Toronto Maple Leafs, where you could say we also got fleeced here, but, uh, you know, it was definitely exciting and fun, and it was great to get Mike Camilleri back with the Calgary Flames, and after he wore 93 for the rest of the 
12, 11, and 12 season, he reverted back to his regular 13. And, you know, that's just interesting that he wore that number. And definitely tempted to fate where he wore that number with the New Jersey Devils, the ultimate devil thing. But, uh, you know, he was quite a character and definitely had the Italian uh, bloodlines there. His name, Mike Camilleri. Camilleri almost sounds like a, a dish you could have at the at a at an Italian restaurant with calamari. Enough of the making fun of the name here. So yeah, if you enjoy everything I do on my YouTube channel, just uh, make sure you you like subscribe. I mean, you do cover sports mostly as like this and uh, recap games and stories. And I do have a story that I'm gonna have to uh, make a video on that's already happened. But I also uh, talk personal vlogs, attempt to comedy, and uh, share my experiences at sporting events or. Uh, you know, or I'm on the road when I capture my smartphone here. So if that sounds like everything you like to watch here, just uh, make sure you like, subscribe, and follow along. As I say, go Flames go, and I'll see you in the next video.